Have you ever wished that you had a master floral designer that you could have stand beside you step by step and teach you the process of floral design? My name is Kirby Holt. I'm a master floral designer with more than 25 years of experience in the business and I want to show you step by step how to create beautiful floral designs with the kits from myfloraldesign.com. I hope you enjoy this video and this series. Thank you for joining us for another episode on MyFloralDesign.com. This is a great arrangement that I have for you today. It's a white garden style design and the placements of the flowers will be put in parallel a lot like we do landscaping where uh, flowers and plants are put in to grow parallel to each other. We're going to adopt that same style for this uh, silk flower arrangement or permanent flower arrangement that you can make for your home. And I'm going to start with this, uh, this planted agapanthus and uh, you have the blooms and the leaves. The leaves really uh, favor kind of a, a grass and we've already glued the styrofoam and have some moss in the container for you. And just over to um, uh, about halfway uh, from the, the center to the outside of the container, about halfway over, you're going to insert this right in the middle part, push that all the way in, just push it in real firmly. And then we can take the blooms on the stems and just kind of straighten them, move them apart. This one has the tag. And that's one of the things always, if uh, your, your flowers come with tags on them, go ahead and make sure you get all of that off and not have just a little bit of that sticker stuck on. Because sometimes uh, I'll uh, be in a, an office and I'll see a silk arrangement or a permanent arrangement still has part of that sticker stuck on it. So we'll do due diligence and make sure we take those off. Now, uh, I want these to kind of look like it's growing. So I'm going to just separate it just a little bit, maybe bend their heads over because the uh, heads of this type of flower often will bend just a little bit because they are kind of heavy. And then uh, on the opposite side of that, I'm going to take this tall stem. It's really uh, uh, some kind of little berry or, or wild, um, wild looking wildflower type of uh, berry arrangement, uh, uh, berry element. And I'm going to just cut maybe uh, about five inches off of that stem. And this is going to be a fairly heavy duty stem. The wire is pretty hard. So one of the things sometimes I'll do is just score it with my wire cutters and then bend it. And, you, and when you bend it, you can hear that wire break because that wire, when it's real stiff like that, it breaks fairly easily. So I'm going to put this also just growing kind of parallel to this agapanthus plant. This is going to be the tallest element in the design. Now right next to that I'm going to put one of these branches. Um, this is kind of like a birch branch or just a synthetic branch but I love using branches and designs because they bring a naturalness that you can't get in the arrangement without them. You have two of those so we're going to just do one on one side one up with that berry stem and the other one here with this agapanthus stem and these I'm going to bend those in where these are standing up fairly tall. I'm going to bend these in just a little bit more. Uh, anytime you're doing a parallel arrangement you should let one side kind of dominate and this side has more volume but this side has more height so they kind of uh, help to balance each other that way. Now the next step we're going to do and I'm going to push that to the side just a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to take four of these white bells of Ireland and cut them off of the stem, the ones that go around the edges and cut those off. But the last one we're going to leave on because I want to maintain that height and if I cut this off of the stem we're going to lose that three or four inches of height there. By leaving it on, putting into the inside of the arrangement, this will hide as we put more materials around it. So I'm going to put that right here. Just um, let this, and I love to give this a little bit of a bend. Now. In nature, nothing is perfectly straight, so I always try to give flowers just a little bit of a bend or a little bit of a twist, and that helps make them appear to be more natural. Taking another tag off here, and uh, this, these bells of Ireland are kind of framing the rest of the arrangement, so I'm kind of letting those bend in, and you can see how they come out and kind of frame the rest of the arrangement. I'll come to the other side. Now, in order to get things in the box, sometimes we'll bend and twist to uh, pack things, just straighten those stems up. It's not too hard to do that with your fingers. And then press that right into the foam. Now another thing that sometimes I, I will do is use hot glue and just put a dab of hot glue on the tip. If you want everything to be glued together really, really 
firmly and permanently. You can put just a little bit of hot glue on those tips as you're making those insertions. But you can see I've used these Bells of Ireland to kind of frame. Now this one I'm going to trim just about an inch off of it and I'm going to come right in front of this uh, first one in the berry stem so that we have it on a little bit lower level. Now we have we have created this nice framed effect, really almost like a wildflower garden style arrangement. Now the next thing I want to do <clears throat> is cut up this bush of Dusty Miller. We, I love using Dusty Miller, use it in a lot of the arrangements that I do. One, it's very, very current, but it also looks so natural. Uh, I love for people to look at an arrangement that we've made and just about have to come over and touch it to see if it's real or not. So um, that's a great thing about this kind of foliage. It really does look almost as natural as the real plant growing. And we've been able to do that, or the manufacturers have been able to do that, by putting a flocking on top of the plastic. And that flocking really gives that softness that the natural plant has, really mimics it in a very effective way. And you can see I've cut those off of this stem without leaving very much excess on here. Most of it has gone into the uh, stem of the leaves that I'm going to use. Now there are, uh, you'll find there are two different ones. Some of them have two sets of leaves here, here, and then the one in the center. And then some of them have just one set. So we will push those up. This will make a little bit of a smaller cluster. This will make a larger cluster so that we can use those that have the larger clusters where we need more greenery, these where we need less. So I really don't need a whole lot to come right in here, but I need just a little bit there. So I'm gonna put just a, a small one there, put a larger one here. Okay, I want a small one. Here's a small one here. Because I've put the large one there, I'm just gonna go in right beside it with the small one and kind of creating almost a collar effect around that outside edge of that. Again, I'm using one of the small ones, but continuing to create just a little bit of a collar over here. Now, <clears throat> I have a couple more elements that I wanna place in before we begin to finish the arrangement. One is this just a little uh, foliage plant, and instead of cutting it all apart, I wanna place it in, <clears throat> and I'm going to come in right at the base of the berry bush, right behind that Dusty Miller that I put in. And put this little plant, I'm gonna pull just a couple of the leaves to the back and the others will be to the front. And then we have some grapevine orbs, and I love to use orbs. One of the things that this does for us is it pulls the brown of the container up into the arrangement and kind of marries those or, or makes those make sense together. <laughs> and the, uh, the orb is already wired to the pick, the wood pick for you, but what you may wanna do is just take that pick and kind of push it up into the orb just a little bit, and that way it stands straight on there for you. And I'm going to come in right in between the agapanthus and that vine and put one up kind of tall and just ease that in right here so that it is the right in the center of that arrangement. And then I'm going to cut just a little bit of that pick off, maybe, maybe just like an inch and a half. And I'm going to come here in the center beneath that agapanthus and put it in kind of low so that we have them kind of stair-stepping or terracing down from the front of the arrangement. Now I want to just spin that so I can see. Now we'll need to fill that in just a little bit on this. Uh, here, I've pulled that leaf off. If you pull that leaf off, just reach right there, put it right back on the stem, and I'm going to push from the bottom. Sometimes that flocking almost acts like a glue, and you kind of have to push through that to get it to let go. <clears throat> so I'm going to come here, place a little bit more of that Dusty Miller, and I think I want to put a piece just so that it's right underneath the edge of that orb. Okay, so that has really finished off those edges nicely. And then I can use the rest of this, and I'll spin it so you can see the back. We want to make sure that the back side of the container also is 
finished off well and we can use the dusty miller to do that and make it attractive from the back. Now this is really what I would think of as a one-sided arrangement. It's primarily uh, going to be viewed from one side, maybe sitting on a credenza, uh, a sofa table, even in uh, a bookcase or a, an entertainment center if you have a space that's tall enough to accommodate this and this would work well in a space like that as well. Uh, because it's not real uh, not real deep, it would work well on, on a mantle. This is something because it is one-sided, you could sit it on a mantle. But we always want to finish off the back and at least have some foliages back there so that uh, we, we don't see the mechanics, so that it's finished off nicely. Now I want to turn this back around, maybe just see uh, what we can do to just for placement, sometimes right at the end, we'll just twist and bend things around to make sure that we're getting the impact and effect that we want it to have. And I, I know I'll have arrangements in my home and every time I walk by them, I'm tempted to pick at them and tweak them. It's kind of like pinching a baby's cheeks. You just can't help but do it. But there we have kind of a garden style, almost a landscape arrangement. You can almost imagine this planted outside your home. This also looks very beautiful in many different places inside your home. Thank you for joining me today. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. I encourage you to browse the library of arrangements and videos on our website, myfloraldesign.com.